Hey guys, welcome to another exciting chemistry lecture. So today we're going to start off in a new topic. We're going to look at chapter 7. We're going to focus on quantum theory and atomic structure. Alright, so to start off we're going to look at the following topics. We're going to look at the nature of light, the wave nature of light, the particle nature of light. We're going to look at atomic spectra, the line spectra, and riper equation. We're going to look at the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. We're also going to look at the energy levels of the hydrogen atom, spectral analysis, and we're going to move on to the wave particle duality of matter and energy. And this will look at the wave nature of electrons and particle nature of photons and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. You've heard of Heisenberg's uncertain, uncertainty principle, right? Yes, you have. We're going to look at that and more. So let's just start off with the wave nature of light. So as you know, visible light is a type of electromagnetic radiation. The wave properties of electromagnetic radiation are described by three variables. Do you remember what those variables are? Can you tell me what they are? Yeah, good guess. First one, frequency. And if you note this Greek symbol that's given, it's called nu, and that represents the number of cycles the wave undergoes per second. Uh, what would be the second one? Um, you guessed it. It's wavelength. So wavelength, the Greek that's given for that is lambda, and that's a distance between corresponding points on adjacent waves. And the units for that is in nanometers, which is 10 to the minus 9 meters, could be in picometers, 10 to the minus 12, or in Armstrong, 10 to the minus 10 meters. So I want you guys to be aware of different units, just know the conversions from say nanometers to meters, picometers to meters, Armstrong to meters. Uh, for frequency, the units is in uh, per second or otherwise called hertz, you know, like the uh, rental car hertz. And then the third one would be amplitude, you got it. So the amplitude represents the height of a wave crest or the depth of a throb, which is related to its intensity or brightness of that particular radiation. All right, so in a vacuum, electromagnetic radiation travels at the speed of light in waves. And um, the speed of light is a constant. And if you look at the relationship, the speed of light is related to the frequency times the wavelength. And the value for the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And remember I said it's a constant, so that means that um, in order for it to be a constant, if the frequency is high, that means that the wavelength has to be low, and vice versa. If the frequency is low, that means the wavelength has to be high in order for it to be a constant, right? So if we kind of sum up everything here, the speed of a wave, C, is given by the distance it moves per unit time. So this speed would be in meters per second, as we said before, and that speed is the product of the frequency, nu, that's the number of cycles per second, and the wavelength, lambda, that's the um, number, the distance per cycle, right? So far so good, pretty easy, right? So let me explain this in a little more detail in terms of a pictorial diagram. So we're, we're gonna look at the reciprocal relationship of frequency and wavelength. So here I have a nice diagram to represent uh, a good relationship between frequency and wavelength. So on top, I have my wavelength, that's a distance per cycle. So a wavelength would be like from one corresponding uh, area on the wave to the, to the, the exact area on the, another wave. So say from peak to peak, that's one wavelength, or from trough to trough, that's a wavelength. So this is the wavelength for A. If you look at B, you notice that the wavelength for B is much smaller than A, and for C, even much smaller. And if you look at the top, you'll notice that um, one wavelength for A um, is, is um, at least, it's twice as large as for B, it's even four times as large for C. And then if we look on the flip side, in terms of frequency, you'll notice that frequency is the number of cycles um, that, that, uh, that moves 
per second per point, number of waves that move through um, a given point per second. And then if you say for the frequency of A compared to the frequency of B, let's multiply by two. So for in one second, if you have um, one cycle that goes through a point per second, for B, the frequency is twice as much. You would have two cycles that go through a given point per second. For C, it's four times as much. So that's the relationship or the inverse relationship between your wavelength and your frequency. So far so good? All right, now let's look at the different amplitudes. And when I say different amplitudes, I'm referring to the brightness or the intensity of your wave. So again, if you look at the diagram here, um, the amplitude of the wave is the height of the crest or the depth of the trough. So this is your, your crest, this is your trough. So this height from the center to the top represents the amplitude. So the taller your amplitude or the larger the amplitude is, um, it would be the brighter it is. And the smaller it is, the dimmer that um, amplitude would be. I hope this makes sense. All right. So light of a particular color has a specific frequency and thus a specific wavelength. So let's look at regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. So if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, it's made up of um, different um, uh, types of rays. We have from left to right, we have gamma rays. We have X-rays, ultraviolet rays. We have visible. We have infrared rays, we have microwaves, we have radio frequency waves, right? And if you look at the top, you'll notice that the wavelength increases from left to right, whereas the frequency is the opposite. The frequency increases from right to left. So what that means is that like gamma rays, for example, they have, there are higher frequency, short wavelengths. So that means that they're more penetrating. So um, they're more like a radioactive type of rays, so you could get damaged by gamma rays. When you go to the doctor, um, if you're sick, they'll probably give you an X-ray. So X-rays are not as um, as strong in terms of frequency compared to gamma rays. Um, and then, if you go do research, right? You 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 probably look at what we call blue light, ultraviolet ray. I would advise you not to put your hands in, in, on, in the ultraviolet light. You probably burn your skin. All right, so, that, that's, so when you get that sunburn, that, that's due to the ultraviolet rays and that's dangerous. Um, the visible spectrum is, is, if you see the enlargement here, it consists of the, um, the nice uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue indigo violet and the spectrum ranges from say 400 to 750 nanometers um, so 400 would be like your your, your violet um, 750 would be more of your red right so visible light represents a small region of the electromagnetic spectrum so what we're saying is that all waves in the spectrum travels at the same speed through a vacuum but in different frequency and therefore different wavelengths, all right? Um, again, uh, we could say that the spectrum is a continuum of radiant energy. S um, so that means that one region meets the next. So say, for example, if we started with the infrared region, you would run into the microwave region. So they're not um, disjunct, they're, they're not separated, all right? They're not dis disjointed. It's, it's just one just runs into the next region. All right, does that make sense? Excellent. All right, so just to add to that, we, remember we said that um, uh, different wavelengths uh, or frequency, uh, they have different colors. So say for example, we mentioned like for red, the wavelength for that was like 750 nanometers all the way to violet, which was approximately 400 nanometers. So if we're dealing with um, light of, of one single, wavelength that's called a monochromatic that means one color if you're dealing with light of many wavelengths that's called polychromatic and white light as you know is polychromatic and so if you take white light and you shine it through a prism um, you'll see the nice rainbow color.
colors, right? You enjoy seeing that, like you, you have a drop of water, put in the sunlight, you see the different colors of rainbow. You got it. And the good thing with, with, with what we are learning here is that it has applications. You're not just learning this in a vacuum. Um, we use this information in our everyday life. So say, for example, when we talk about electromagnetic radiation um, that has, say, long wavelength, low frequency, it's utilized in um, of daily habits, like when you want to warm up a nice pizza, your microwave oven, that's one utility there. Um, you want to listen to the radio, right? And also, one um, your cell phones. The cell phones that you use every day um, that utilizes the long wavelength, low frequency radiation. So those are examples in terms of application of what we're learning in an everyday life. So just to kind of sum up everything, I want you guys just to take a minute and just look at this problem that 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 looks at the interconversion of wavelength and frequency. So let's say you went to the dentist, right? Um, you, you, you had to get your regular exam. Uh, you went to the dental hygienist. Um, you took the x-rays of your, your gum. They say, hold still, take a snapshot. So you got a wavelength of um, one Armstrong. Um, and then that's through taking several dental radiographs. And then at the same time, you're listening to you through your, to your, your station, to your, your, your earbuds. And that has a wavelength of 325 centimeters. You look out the window, you see blue sky, and that has a wavelength of 473 nanometers. And the question is, what is the frequency that's in Hertz or per second of the electromagnetic radiation for each of the sources? And the assumption is that the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So just take a minute, guys. Let's do this problem and let's work it out together. All right. Take a minute. Let's come back to this problem. All right. All right, guys. Welcome back. So as I said, all we're doing is just using the relationship that we discussed before. We're using the relationship between the speed of light, which is a product of frequency times the wavelength. So you're given the wavelength, you know the um, speed of light, so all you're asked to do is determine, simply determine the frequency in, um, in uh, units uh, per second for each of the different units. But before we do this, you notice that they have given us the wavelength in different units. We're given it in terms of Armstrong's, nanometers, centimeters. So what you want to do is to first convert each of those units to meters and then you can do the required calculation. Does that make sense? All right, so let's take a look at this in some more details. All right, so the first step is you want to do the unit conversion. So say, for example, you know that one Armstrong is 10 to the minus 10 meters. So you can do that conversion for your, your Armstrong. You know that we're solving for the frequency. So the relationship would be the speed of light divided by the wavelength and units would be either per second or hertz, right? So let's do that. So the solution for this, the first example, as you know, just do the conversion from Armstrong to meters. We know that um, one Armstrong is 10 to the minus 10 meters. So Armstrong cancels, so we're left with the units in meters. So once we have a wavelength in meters, using the relationship between the, um, the speed of light and the wavelength, we could determine the frequency, right? So just three times 10 to the eight in, remember, meters per second, divide that by one times 10 to the 10 meters. So the meters cancel, so we're, we're left with per second and just trying to keep the sig fit straight. So we have three sig figs times 10 to the 18 per second. Got it? Next example we have for the radio signal. Again, we do the conversion between um, centimeter to meters as before, and then do the division, we get 9.23 times 10 to the seven per second. And finally, for the blue sky, uh, do the conversion from nanometers to meters, and the answer will result in 6.34 times 10 to the 14 per second. So you guys got that, right? All right, so here's a follow-up problem. We're gonna take a break to it and come back to this, all right? Take it away. You got it. Okay.